Hello there. In this video um, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use Fluid Designer for 3D printing to create um, rings. Um, if you want a copy of Fluid Designer for 3D printing, if you just go to our website at fluiddesigner.co.uk, go to our downloads page, you can download it completely free of charge. Essentially it's based upon Blender and Microvellum technology, so it's open source and free for you to use. Um, in today's lesson, however, we're going to show you some objects that we've created. Um, in this instance, we're going to show you some how you can create rings. Um, and, but these objects aren't actually available when you download the basic Fluid Designer application. You can, of course, build your own objects. Um, these objects do need to be purchased from us. So if we start off with uh, the most basic of rings, if I just take this object here and just drag it onto the workspace, um, what I've got starting off is a, is a ring here and uh, if I just look at the default size, well it's size UK size H plus so it's got an internal diameter this ring of 15.09 millimeters and we'll show you in a minute how you can modify that and uh, if we look in the panel over here we can see it's got a cross section of one millimeter by five millimeters in other words if I just zoom in one millimeter is the thickness of the ring and five millimeters is the height of the ring. Now I can quickly and simply change the size of the ring so I can uh, have a three millimeter high ring with still with a one millimeter thickness or I could go a little bit mad and have a 15 millimeter high ring still with a wall thickness of one millimeter. Or alternatively you can see if I scroll down I can have a cross section uh, thickness of 1.5 millimeters by say 5 millimeters so the wall thickness is now one and a half millimeters or I can go much further down the menu here two millimeters thickness three millimeters thickness etc. I'm going to set it back to the default size which is one millimeter wall thickness and five millimeters height. So that's how we can change the uh, dimensions of the the thickness and the height of the ring if I actually wanted a different ring size completely, I'd need to go to the window over here and um, say the default size is UK size H. So let's say that you had a you wanted to make a ring UK size P. So what we need to do is to switch that on and uh, allow us to edit it. So you can see what we've got here is we've got a circle now created outside of our existing ring. And uh, what we need to do is we need to first of all delete the thickness from the original ring. And then it's also a good idea to uh, hide that original default ring. So we're not working with the default ring anymore. We're going to work with UK size P. And it is very important that you do remove the thickness from the default ring. Otherwise that will actually print with your object. You don't want that to happen. Um, so we've got UK size P now, but we've got no thickness. Well, that's not a problem. We can just uh, set a cross section of one millimeter thick by five millimeters high. So you can see there we can change the thickness of the wall thickness of the ring, the height of the ring, and we can change the internal diameter of the ring all from the menu system. Now the next thing that we might want to do is instead of having a, a purely cylindrical ring like this, we might want it thinned off on one side. Now before we can do that we do actually need to convert this object into a mesh and um, I'm just going to rotate it about the x-axis 90 degrees and rotate it about the z-axis 90 degrees. Um, the only reason I've done that uh, is just to change the view of the object. It's still the same ring. I've just changed the way that I'm looking at it from the front here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin out the bottom part of this ring. And to do that I need to go into edit mode. And if I just highlight the bottom half of the ring, um, and then if I press S on the keyboard I can scale the object. Now I do have to wait a little bit of time before this happens, but uh, it's okay with a small ring like this. So as I move the mouse now you can see I'm getting some weird effect. Well the first thing I want to do is to open up this proportional editing circle and I usually set it just over halfway. It's still not doing quite what I want so what I need to do is to press X on the keyboard. Now that limits my scaling to just the X direction 
and we've got this proportional editing circle as well. Okay, now instead of using the mouse to do this, I'm going to type in 0 0.5. So I've scaled it along the x-axis, 0 0.5. In other words, this width now is half the original width. And if I just uh, come out of edit mode, you can see what effect that has had. That's given me a nice, simple ring that's narrower at the bottom than it is at the top. Okay, so we can create uh, a different wall thickness, a different width for the ring, uh, a different internal diameter, and we can flat thin it off at the bottom half of the ring. Okay, so that's um, a simple ring. Um, the next object along is pretty much the same. The only thing is um, there is a, a pattern that you can add to the ring here. So you can see here I've just got this kind of triangular pattern. You can uh, change that pattern. You can increase the number of them. So I've just increased the count to five. Take it down to uh, one. Um, I can change the offset. So in other words, I'm squeezing the pattern closer together. Um, I could also put in a second row. It'll look a little bit silly with this particular size of ring, but you might want to do that. And again, you can change the offset of uh, that uh, pattern as well. So you can play around here, modifying the pattern as you please. Um, and you can also go into the pattern and edit it as well. Um, I'm not going to do too much here, but I'll just show you roughly what you can do. Um, sorry, I need to be... I've not got the pattern selected. Um, if I just uh, view it from the front, if I just zoom in now. So there's my pattern and I can edit that. Uh, just change change it by just dragging these control points. Whoops. And th there's no limit to what you can change this pattern to actually look like. Uh, and then you just uh, attach it back to the ring again. So that's a slightly different pattern. But you can have circles, squares, waves, whatever kind of pattern you want here. You can even write your name. Okay, so that's the second object. Um, now, the rest of the objects that are listed here work pretty much in the same sort of way. And what we can get with these objects is, is a kind of wire style of ring. So I'm just going to scroll down and choose one near the bottom here somewhere. Um, and I'm going to choose a uh, tennis seam curve ring. So if I just drag and drop this object onto the workspace and just move this panel over to the right here, you can see there's my basic ring. Now my inner circle there at the moment is the inner diameter of the ring and it's currently set to be 15 millimeters. Um, but we could modify that, so we could select UK size P again. Okay, so if I switch on UK size P, you'll see that uh, we get a circle now outside of the ring. So what I need to do is, um, first of all, switch off my inner ring. Notice my whole uh, pattern has disappeared now. Um, I need to select my pattern there, my tennis seam curve ring. Um, so what I need to do is I need to set this, I need to align this now with my inner diameter. I need to change it from the default inner diameter to UK size P. And as you can see, we've got a whole list of options here. So there's UK size P. I seem to have completely lost my... Oh, I've hidden the ring, that's what I've done. Instead of hiding, hiding the inner diameter, I hid the ring. My mistake. So there's my tennis uh, seam curve ring, and it's not on the original default in a diameter now. It's on my uh, UK size P diameter, which I've set in this panel here. Okay, so I'll, I will now hide the right thing. I'll hide the inner diameter. So there's my tennis uh, seam curve ring wrapped around UK size P. Now what I need to do is I need to complete this ring, so I'll just uh, I'll just back this panel off out of the way and just move the ring over here. So I need to change my count. So as you can see, if I move the count down to one, that's actually my basic pattern for this tennis seam curve. And as I increase the count, I wrap this curve around my um, UK size P ring, and um, 
we can change the offset of this so I could change my pattern further by reducing the offset but as I do that I must increase the count um, now one thing to watch out for this and it does take a little bit of time to figure this out is does the pattern where it overlaps in other words where the two rings join um, does the pattern where it overlaps match the rest of the pattern around the ring? Sometimes it doesn't. So if I change this to um, 0.6, yeah, you'll see that the ring pattern is not quite the same there where the ring crosses as it is here. It was, however, for 0.7 offset. So sometimes you do have to change this offset value. Instead of leaving it as 0.7, sometimes you might have to change it to 0.75, and you have to do that by typing it in. And as you can see, the effect of that is to create a completely different pattern here compared to the rest of the ring. Now, you might want to do that. Um, in this instance, I'm going to leave it as 0 0.7. <coughs> so there's my, um, there's my basic ring now. And that can be 3D printed as it is. Um, but I can also, as I showed you with the basic uh, cylindrical ring, I can also flatten it off on one side, make it a, a little bit more feminine. Before I do that, however, I need to convert it to a mesh. And uh, if I just uh, view it from the front, and I'll just rotate it about the x-axis uh, 90 degrees again, and rotate it about z 90 degrees. So all I've done is I've just turned it around so I can view it from the front. And uh, again, I need to go into edit mode and just highlight the bottom of the ring and uh, S for scale. Now, this is a bit more complicated than the previous one, so I'll just have to wait a few seconds before this works. Um, so we'll, t we'll take a few seconds because there's a lot of calculation going on here. I'm, I've not got a particularly fast processor in my machine, so you do have to wait. And we'll see in the toolbar at the top of the screen when things are ready. Shouldn't be too long now. He says. It will happen. You do need to be patient. this point I'm beginning to think I should have paused the video no it's done it now um, so I first of all I need to increase this circle this proportional editing circle to make it half the ring I do need to limit my uh, movement to the X dimension so I just press X on the keyboard so that will thin it in just in the X direction and again I'm going to type 0 0.5 to change the thickness there and uh, if I come out of edit mode now you can now see uh, I flattened out my ring at the bottom. Now this looks really good, but in truth, this particular ring isn't probably going to print because we started off with a thickness of one millimeter here. Um, we can probably see that if we measure it at the top. So the diameter of this is probably one millimeter. Yeah, that's about right, one millimeter. And because we thinned it out at the bottom by 50%, basically, this is now less than a millimetre. In fact, it's probably about half a millimetre, just a little bit more, 0.7. Now, that's probably too thin to actually 3D print. But the solution is actually what I should have done uh, is when I open up the... If I just go back and open it up again... What I should have done at the beginning is if I've decided I'm not going to uh, print this as a cylindrical ring, in other words like that, if I do want to thin it off, then before I do that what I ought to do is to change the diameter of the ring from one millimeter. I really need to upsize this to something like 1.5 millimeters thickness to start with or maybe two. So if I change that to 1.5 millimeters thickness, it does affect the appearance. Um, but what that means is that if we, uh, I'm not going to do all of this now, but um, if I just change that to a mesh, if I view it from the front, 
if I rotate it about x90, rotate it about z90, you see that it starts off thicker than before. Because it starts off thicker, when I um, when I go into edit mode and thin this out, and I'm not going to do it this time because the, it does take quite a while. When I thin it out this time, because I started with a thicker mesh, I'll end up with with a better thickness at the end. But let me assure you, by playing around a little bit, you can ensure that you can print all of these uh, um, patterns. Um, so all of these, or most of these objects here, can be created in a similar way to what I've just shown you. If you want a basic cylindrical ring, you can print them as a one millimeter thick. If you want to thin the ring off on one side, you do need to increase the original thickness. Once you've actually created your ring, you can always go onto the internet and you can go to a company like Shapeways. Um, here's the tennis curve ring, or here's an example of it, and you can upload your ring to Shapeways where you can get it printed in plastic um, or in uh, silver or brass or even in gold or gold plated. So you can get uh, your ring printed you just uh, got to upload it to a, a 3D printing company like Shapeways. So there's an example of uh, what it might look like when it's uh, finally printed. Okay, so that's um, Fluid Designer for 3D printing. Basic software is available free of charge if you go to our downloads page. Um, additional files, uh, objects like we've just shown you here, do actually need to be purchased separately. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Thank you.